Hi, this week we're going to talk about the science of weight loss and what I think is the most important uh, thing you need to understand if you're going to lose weight and that's the sort of calories view versus the hormonal view, how they're not actually different and that the hormonal view is actually more comprehensive and thus more conducive to getting you to lose weight and it's coming right up. So let's start with the energy balance equation. And this is body fat equals calories in minus calories out. And this is always true. This is what they say is the first law of thermodynamics. That is, you can't create or uh, destroy energy, so therefore this must always be true. And it is. However, what it doesn't mean is that cutting calories equals lower body fat because there's actually three variables in this equation. If you lower calories, you can lower body fat certainly and it will balance or you can lower calories out and that will also balance. The other thing it doesn't say is that the hormones are not important. There's nothing in this equation that says hormones are irrelevant. And the third thing to note is that body fat equals calories in, calories out means that there really is no such thing as a caloric deficit because it's an equality. It equals that. It always has to balance. So we're going to explore what that means coming up. So let's think about how the body actually stores energy. So when you are feeding, you take in energy. So if you think about a coal burning power plant, for example, I've represented this as coal. Then when you put in that coal, the power plant can do one of two things with it. It can burn it for energy or it can store it. And the important thing is that when the insulin is high, that is, you cannot take the energy from storage and burn it because the arrows don't go that way. So the hormones are important because it tells the body which way the energy flows. When insulin is high, energy is going to flow either into storage or metabolism, which is burning, but it's not going to flow from storage into metabolism. So let's put that into um, the body's terms. So food energy is calories. That is what it is. Whenever you eat, insulin is going to go up and you can store it either as sugar, which is called glycogen, or body fat, which is through the process of de novo lipogenesis. Or you can burn it and that's through metabolism and that's all the energy that the kidney and the brain and the heart needs and there's exercise. Of the two, metabolism is far more important than exercise. The number of calories you burn during exercise tends to be much smaller than what you use to generate body heat and the rest of normal metabolism. Fasting, when you don't eat, insulin is going to go down. And when insulin goes down, what happens is that the arrow changes so that you can go from storage into burning. And you can only do that is if insulin is low. So insulin, we say, inhibits lipolysis, which is just a fancy way of saying that high insulin levels are going to stop you from burning fat. So the ways that we store energy is through fat and glycogen. When we break it down, it's the process technically known as glycogenolysis and lipolysis. So let's look what happens if you want to lose weight. So if you do simple calorie restriction and you do a very low fat diet and you eat 10 times a day, you're going to keep insulin levels high because every time you eat, insulin stays high. So let's assume, for example, that you eat 2,000 calories a day and you burn 2,000 calories a day. Your body fat has 100,000 calories in storage. Now you want to lose weight, so you cut down the number of calories that you eat to 1,500 calories a day. That's standard advice given the world over. 
Well, insulin is high, so you can't take any energy out of storage. So in order to make this equation balance, there's only one thing that can happen. And that is for your metabolic rate to decrease to 1500 calories as well. And that's all because you left your insulin levels high. Therefore, if you're not taking any calories out of storage, well, you're not burning any body fat. And that's exactly what we see. As you reduce your calories, your metabolic rate goes down and then you don't lose weight. On the other hand, if you do a calorie restriction, but you do do fasting and you do allow a lengthy period for that insulin to fall, what happens is completely different because in a day you're taking in 1500 calories now, but you're taking it at perhaps over one meal or perhaps over two meals and allowing that insulin to fall. As that insulin starts to fall, what happens is that you now have the ability to access all those calories that are in storage because the arrow can move from storage to burning. And therefore, there's no reason for you to burn fewer than 2000 calories. You can simply take 500 calories from your body fat. So you don't have to burn less than 2000 and the number of calories that are in fat are down from 100,000 to 99,500 and you're starting to lose weight. So let's go back to this energy balance equation. If you allow a period of fasting, that is getting those insulin levels low and you do a calorie restriction, so you're decreasing the number of calories in, you need to balance this equation because there's an equal signs there. So when you decrease the calories in, you can keep your calories out the same and decrease your body fat. Perfect, that's what you want to do. But you can only do that if you fix the hormonal problem. If on the other hand, you keep your insulin levels very high, and this happens if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates, if you're eating all the time, but also in the uh, condition of insulin resistance, so it makes it more difficult to lose weight. If you keep your insulin high and you reduce your calories in, that insulin is not gonna allow you access to body fat, so the only way you can balance this equation now is to decrease your calories out. That's when your met metabolic rate goes down, you're gonna generate less body heat, you're gonna feel cold, you're gonna feel tired because your body doesn't have the energy. All that energy is in fact locked away in the body fat stores. It's in fact lowering that insulin level that allows you to access that body fat. So the hormonal theory of weight loss is not different than the caloric theory. They're not saying different things, but the hormonal theory is saying that you need to pay attention to the hormones which is predominantly insulin so that you can have access to those body fat stores so you can in fact balance that energy equation. What does it mean practically? Well, certain foods stimulate insulin more than others. So practically, the only thing it's saying is that some foods are more fattening than others. And I don't see how that's not common sense. Brownies are more fattening than broccoli. I can live with that. That seems to me to be completely true. It's not about the calories because it also depends on what your body does with those calories. If you take those calories, does your body store it or does it burn it? And you only know what to do with it based on the hormones. This is the key, the absolute key to understanding weight loss and why I always say that obesity is actually a hormonal problem not a caloric problem. I hope that things makes things a little easier to understand. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. So if you enjoyed that video, if you could do me a favor and just hit that like button. And if you're interested in further uh, reading about it or listening to it, check out my book, The Obesity Code, but also check out this uh, video right here where I talk about the key weight loss tips, 
sort of how to get around this hormonal theory to lose weight the proper way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.